Good day everyone. In this video, we will be discussing fundamentals of IP addressing and routing. Here are the topics to be covered in this video. Let us first define some terms that we will be using in this discussion. First is datagram. What is datagram? A datagram is defined as a self-contained independent entity of data carrying enough information to be routed from the source to the destination computer without reliance on previous exchanges between this source and destination computer and the transporting network. There is no fixed duration connection between two communication points as there is in most voice telephone conversations. A datagram or packet must be self-contained and not rely on previous exchanges. Next is packet. So a packet is a small amount of data that is sent over a network, such as a local area network on the internet. Each packet, like a real-world package, includes a source destination as well as the content or data being transferred. When the packets arrive to their destination, they are reassembled into a single file or other contiguous data block. Networks that ship around or that ship data around in small packets are called packet switch networks. Next is Internet Protocol or IP. An IP is a routable protocol meaning that it can be sent across networks that handles addressing, routing, and the process of inserting and removing data from packets. Data sent via connectionless methods are called datagrams. An IP is considered to be connectionless because it does not establish a session with a remote computer before sending data. IP addressing An IP address is divided into two parts. The network ID, which means that it, uh, it represents the number of networks. The host ID, which represents the number of hosts. In the illustration being shown, each class have a specific range of IP addresses. The class of IP address is used to determine the number of bits used in a class and number of networks and hosts available in that class. An IP address is divided into subclasses, class A, class B, class C, class D, and class E. An IP address is 32-bit long. Now remember, there are 8 bits in one byte. So in class A, an IP address is assigned to those networks that contain a large number of hosts. The network ID is 8 bits long and the host ID is 24 bits long. In class B, an IP address is assigned to those networks that ranges from small size to large size networks. The network ID is 16, uh, 16 bits long while the host ID is 16 bits long. In class C, an IP address is assigned to only small size networks. The network ID is 24 bits long while the host ID is 8 bits long. In class D, 
an IP address is reserved for multicast addresses. It does not possess subnetting. The higher order bits of the first octet is always set to 1110, and the remaining bits determine the host ID in the network. Lastly, class E. In class E, an IP address is used for the future use or for the research and development purposes. It does not possess any subnetting. The higher order bits of the first octet is always set to 1111. And the remaining bits determines the host ID in the only network. What is routing? Now, routing focuses on the end-to-end -end logic of forwarding data. Routing is the process of selecting a path for data to be transferred from the source to the destination. A router is a special device uh, that performs routing. When a device has multiple paths to a destination, it always prefers one path over the other. Routing is the same, or sorry, routing in the name given to this selection process. Routing can be accomplished through the use of special network devices such as routers, as mentioned earlier, or through software processes. Software-based routers have limited functionality and range. A router is always set up with a default route. Now, a default route instructs the router on where to forward a packet if no route to a specific destination is found. If multiple paths to the same destination exist, the router can make a decision based on hop, count, bandwidth, metric, prefix length, and delay. We now go to sample routing. In the diagram, a router has three interfaces labeled 1, 2, and 3, or LAN 1, LAN 2, and LAN 3. And each router interface has its own IP addresses. All interfaces connected to LAN 1 have an IP address in the form of 223.1.1 and so on and so forth, while those connected to LAN 2 and 3 have an IP addresses in the form of 223.1.2 and so on and 223.1.3 and so on and so forth respectively. Each IP address is made up of two parts. The first part of an IP address, or the first three bytes, specifies the network. Again, okay, the first part of an IP address okay, specifies the network, like 222.2.3, as shown for LAN 1, for A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay, next... The second part, the last byte of an IP address specifies the host in the network. Okay? Again, so the second part or the last byte of an IP address specifies the host uh, in the network, which is 1, 2, and 3. The last numbers. Next is subnet okay a subnet also known as subnetwork is a segmented portion of a larger network subnets are logical divisions of an ip network into smaller network segments now uh, a subnet is used by organizations to divide large networks into smaller ones 
uh, in order to make the subnetworks more efficient. A subnet or the subnet's goal is to divide a large network into a collection of smaller interconnected networks in order to reduce traffic. This eliminates the need for traffic to travel through unnecessary routes, resulting in faster network speeds. We now go to network layer. A network layer is a protocol that defines routing and logical addressing, like the IP addressing. It is concerned with getting packets from one location to another. The network layer must understand the subnet's topology, like uh, bus topology or the network topologies, bus topologies, we have the hybrid topology, we have the star, and so on and so forth. And select appropriate paths through it. When the source and destination networks are in different networks, the network layer or the IP must accommodate these differences. So what are the goals of the network layer design? So the following are its goals. First, the network layer service should be independent of the subnet topology. Second, the transport layer Okay, should be protected from the number or type and topology of the present subnets. And lastly, the transport layer's network addresses should be or should follow a consistent numbering scheme even across LANs and WANs. If you notice, the, uh, we've mentioned here the transport layer because transport layer in the network layer works hand in hand in uh, transporting uh, data over the network and making sure that it arrives uh, from uh, its uh, source to its destination. Lastly, we have the network addressing. One of the network layer's primary responsibilities is network addressing. Network addresses are always logical or software-based. A host is also known as an end system because it only has one network connection. An interface uh, is the boundary between the host and the link. As a result, the host can only have one interface. Now, a host is also known as an end-to-end -end system because it only has one network connection or sorry, a network address, uh, network addressing includes IP addressing and also routing as discussed earlier. And that concludes this topic. Thanks for watching.